markets remain crowded buses remain being overloaded and churches are still crowded with little or no measures being put in place to enforce covid 19 yet Chan is ongoing and 11 February Youth Day has been cancelled in Cameroon. How serious are we as far as fighting COVID-19 is concerned? When we move down to Moya Market as we speak right now, you will see how populated or crowded the market is. You go down to all the markets around the corner, especially in Bonamusa, the market here in Douala, you see how crowded they are. You go to Mashe Congo, how crowded they are. You go to our churches these days around, you see how crowded the churches are. The worst is when you want to take a bus to a different locality we want to take a bus to a different locality the vehicles or those buses still being over are still being overloaded and yet they little or nothing that the government is doing to enforce the covid 19 measures we see that 11 february and other and some major celebration across the globe across the nation has been cancelled as far as covid 19 is concerned but yet chan is still effective and ongoing are we really serious in the fight against covid 19 this is house of commons with me tamai javi In March 2020, right up to this day, Cameroon witnessed the first ever uh, case of COVID-19 in March. And when we moved down from March to this day, we are counting plus thousands of cases in Cameroon. We are counting plus 400 deaths in Cameroon. And we are counting plus thousands of cases, recovered cases, as far as COVID-19 is concerned. The pandemic is still ongoing in Cameroon and the world at large, with different virus strands being recorded in different nations as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Other nations are fighting to ensure that the vaccine be made available for their population to take it so as that they can reduce or mitigate the spread of the deadly virus. However the case may be, like in Kenya, it is compulsory for everyone walking on the road to have a face mask. It is compulsory for all those who are going to church to put on their face masks and it is compulsory for all those who are moving around in different occasions to have their face masks. Curfew is still being enforced in Kenya between 6 p.m. Uh, between 10 p.m. There is nothing that you can go out with. Everybody is forced to stay indoors and nightclubs are shut down within that period of time. In other nations, we see that as far as that is concerned. But when we come to our green, red, yellow, the question now is how serious are we in terms of fighting COVID-19 while our buses are still being overloaded, our churches are crowded, markets are crowded, our bars remain widely open and there is no curfew in order to reduce this, the, the, the come to, get coming together of people as far as that virus is concerned. Today's edition of our program, we are looking at the topic how serious we are in the fight against COVID-19. Joining us in the studio is Professor Mark Anthony. He is a Pan-Africanist and someone who believes in the virtue and value of Africa and I believe that we, may, we must tackle African problem from an African perspective and not depending on the Western nations in order to provide solutions for program, problems that we have in Africa. Professor Mark, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Javis, and uh, to my fellow panelists, Manu and Jiwi, and uh, to our thousand viewers out there at this moment. I believe that uh, this is another blessed Sunday and when we are talking about the COVID-19 issue in Cameroon, it seems as if uh, we are repeating the same song every day. I want to believe that in Cameroon, we have our challenges, and we have challenges that are beyond the COVID-19, which we should be focused on and which we should be dealing with. The COVID-19 seems to be a pandemic problem, but I believe that in Cameroon, we are managing it well. And as long as we are managing it well, we do not have uh, to cry much about it. Sincerely, the declaration to stop uh, the 11th February uh, was a little bit uh, surprising considering the fact that nightclubs are open and considering the fact that our markets are okay, charged, considering the fact that a lot of things are happening just normal. Okay. So, to me, I think it, is, it was a surprising decision that was taken. Dimo Emmanuel is a civil society uh, advocate and he's someone who believes that we must always look into the crux of our problems 
from a cultural biological perspective and that we must solve our problems from the way in which our forefathers handed out this tradition with Jumu Emmanuel, happy Sunday and thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday to my Javis. Happy Sunday to my able co-panelist, Professor Mark. Happy Sunday to the million viewers of this prestigious TV. I want to send a special Sunday greetings to Richard Fondon, who is watching us from Boya. He is part of the diaspora just coming in from the country. And he recounted a lot as far as this program is concerned. We have from mainland Sope and himself from Thailand who is sending special greetings to you, Tamai Javis. We had uh, a wonderful conversation over the weekend, and he gave me his insight and uh, how this program has impacted them out of Cameroon. And uh, before I hand back the microphone to you, you know we are social critics. When we see what is good in our country, we appreciate. When we see what is not going right, uh, I want to appreciate some few administrators in Boya, where I happen to have visited their offices this week, uh, this Friday, Thursday, and Friday, and I was surprised that people lamented that in Cameroon, in five minutes you could obtain uh, a document in an office without paying in five minutes, as rapid as it was, and it was amazing in the, in the, in the Boya court because somebody came there, he he had programmed five hours, but he was surprised that his name was called. He lamented and he even called the name of God to touch the other parts of the country so that <laughs> other administrators, because to be a leader, you are at the service of the people and not the people at your service. So I really thank such administrators that I met in Boya, and I wish that they could continue in the same vein. But without forgetting to say that, the high top-ranking administrators still in this same area baffles me that they enter their offices at 11 o'clock. So where are we going to? Because we are supposed to start from the top to the bottom. So I'm appreciating those at the bottom. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dewey Manuel. To this topic, we are looking at how serious mm -hmm. are we in combating the COVID-19 in Cameroon. Um, I begin with you, Professor Mark. Um, we are looking at a wide range of issues. Uh, you earlier articulated that Cameroon is combating COVID-19 effectively. Uh, that's why probably we've not had the kind of robust death cases as uh, you know, other countries like in South Africa and Nigeria. But um, when we look at events uh, that have been cancelled in Cameroon, uh, what makes the fact that uh, we are actually already in terms of combating this virus whereas some events are still uh, being organized like we we had the the regional council elections uh campaigns were held in a crowd pulling in manner like in Buya uh, council where we have thousands of people gathered there for campaigns uh, are we serious uh, asking about the seriousness of our ability to combat the so-called pandemic is is uh, is a little bit outrageous i'll put that like that uh, i believe that uh, in cameroon we are combating the COVID 19. i will say that and say it so well uh, how serious and the seriousness <laughs> the question is, so, is how serious that's why it's this. not that are we really serious the seriousness is so serious that i'm going to begin to explain you see when in cameroon we receive news of dead cases that uh, uh we see in the United States, we hear of dead people, the United States COVID-19 killing people in numbers. When you go to South Africa, you hear of the number of cases you feel threatened. You hear of the increase. I think Nigeria is not much as compared to South Africa. You feel, wow, devastated. Is this really happening around the world and even somehow in Africa? Because to be sincere, uh, when the whole idea of COVID-19 arrived Cameroon, you discover that the president through the prime minister actually gave some very, very strong words on how to combat it. And what happened? Everything was closed down. Everything was closed down. And when I believe by the wisdom of each, uh, the president discovered that in one way or the other, if these people remain in their houses, 
might be instead of being killed by COVID-19, they will be killed by hunger. So he said, okay, you people can go out and face your life, but you have to keep on with the mask, face mask. You have to use, uh, wash your hands like he repeated it on the, the 31st of December that you need to, we need to wash our hands. We need to put on a face mask. That was good. But I'll say something, Mr. Leo. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Tama Javis. It is very unfortunate that you can't tell people to go out on the streets and then at the same time you follow them like babies to put on their masks. It is not the responsibility of the government to put on their mask. It is not the responsibility of the government to wash your hands. The government is a law enforcer. It, yes, they are, and I'm certain that I'll give you the case in hand in Kenya where um, it's compulsory you have a face mask. If you without a mm. face mask, you can be arrested by the police True. at any point in time. True. That's why we have forces of law and order. I am sure that was also enforced in Cameroon here so strongly where if you were walking on the street without a face mask, you will be arrested. And you know, like it is the case some people took it and make made it uh, as a means of making their money and uh, a wise government a wise government will believe that these people they know what they are doing so he they allow the people to fight the thing the way they believe they can fight it best so i don't want to question the measures in which the cameroon government has put into place in fighting this COVID-19 in the public. But when it comes to major events, like for example, the president rejected the normal tradition of, uh, he canceled it, the normal tradition of uh, the yeah, New Year wishes that they come and give him, he canceled it this year. Then, uh, I, I saw you mention the Chan issue. I want to say the Chan is something that was organized by the CAF and there were strict measures for you to enter into the stadium and apart from that there are matches that are taking place in europe i'm sure you've not forgotten that but we've seen we've seen we've seen CAF. i think that was last week with a letter warning frowning at that the measures are not being respected yes uh then then how serious are we but then, if you look at the same situation you're talking about matches taking place in europe with little no supporters you see that is the issue i want to say when you look at what is happening in Cameroon, people can frown, but the question is how many COVID-19 cases have we registered in Cameroon as increased cases? Who is fighting it better than who? Okay, when you go to Tanzania, where there is practically no measure, how many cases have you heard? So the issue is, it is a psychological issue first, and the way it is handled psychologically matters. The fear of this disease is what can kill you rather than being affected by it. And so to make sure that the people stay calm and that panic should not be there, you need to relax the measures. But I'm not saying that the Cameroon government has relaxed the measures. I'm simply saying that the Cameroon government is using a wise way of fighting it, though at the same time using it for their political reasons and gain, making their political uh, uh, gains. I want to say that uh, I, there are some declarations that we make at times for the sake of the money that is attached to it, not because of uh, the reality on the ground. If somebody hurt me, I'm sure the person, I'm sure the person hurt me well. Most of the declarations that have been declared are financially attached. They are not reality on the ground. I remember our very uh, Archbishop uh, Cleda Samuel announced on TV that we have conquered COVID-19 because in relation to his perspective, no case that he treated died. So that makes us to believe that we have what it takes to deal with the COVID-19 in Cameroon. But we are not telling people that they should stop putting on their masks. Like the president asks, wash your hands, put on your mask, maintain social distancing. But in Africa, we believe that it is rather when we are together that we are stronger than when we are separated. So it is shocking that a disease or a virus will come that is struggling to separate us and keep us apart from one another. 
when those kind of things come, come it shows you that they are struggling to destroy even the culture of African people. And I'll be sincere to tell you this. In Africa, we can better handle COVID-19 than anywhere in the world. Okay. Um, Dibu Memanuel, we uh, ask you the same question. How serious are we? Because we've seen, um, like the regional council election, when it was ongoing, we saw crowd pulling events, like in Boya, more precise, at Boya Council, where almost thousands of people gathered to uh to to look at the launch of the campaigns we look at the churches are still being flooded we look at the fact that the the the, the markets are still being choked up with people left and right and we are talking about cancellation of a youth day celebration which the size of the population can be reduced uh or they, they can be restrictions in terms of the number of people that can rally but totally cancelled some major events totally cancelled and yet nothing is being said about the fundings of these events where they are supposed to be channeled to and we just have a cancellation are we really serious as far as combating COVID 19 is concerned well uh um COVID 19 itself and i as a man are two different persons you see i am one of the people uh I don't want to poison public opinion on what I personally believe about COVID. Because I am one of the persons who has never believed that there is coronavirus. Yeah, we've had scientific evidences proving no. that there is COVID-19. I, for one, I've been tested. I think I've gone for three tests as far as COVID-19 is concerned. Well, and we've witnessed other people testing positive. That is you. I have never gone for any and I don't wish to go for any because... I don't believe in it. You see, illness in the first place is the state of the mind. Psychology. The psychology. And the belief you attach to that illness. But if I were to look at coronavirus from the Cameroon point of view, I would tell you that I slightly disagree with Professor Mark a bit when he says we are managing it so well. We who? The government of Cameroon, is that the direction of your question? Or are we the masses or we the masses. government? When I ask how serious are we, it involves the masses, the <laughs> government, and every stakeholder. Okay. Your, question, your question now is understood. I want to be very, very frank with you. Very frank. If coronavirus was existing the way I heard it from the first time, 99% of Cameroonians would have been dead. I want to recall to you that Douala, which happens to be the, mo the metropolitan city of Cameroon, the economic hub of this nation, where everybody seeks to look for something to eat. If you go to Mache Sanaga, if you go to Mache Lokpom, if you go to Ndokpasi, all the markets in Douala there is no breathing space. That's one. Two. I want to let you understand that snacks in Douala are 24 on 24. And they are not only meant for youths. There are some officials of this government that sleeps in these snacks. There are bottles of wine that cost 100,000, 150,000 are bought at midday, reserved for the night with their numerous girlfriends. And they sleep in these nightclubs without mask. Visit an area like a Jew's office. See the law enforcement officers who are standing there to check people to wear masks and see if any of them is putting on a mask. I have proofs. Now, to link it to 11 February, I'll tell you that it, it's, uh, it's a folklore. There's nothing serious about it. I will once more remind you that we are dealing with a regime made up of people who are inadvertent and willful forgetters of history of this country. If Youth Day was cancelled, it is not because of coronavirus. Remember that there have been heated debate as to the real significance of this date. And the statement dragging Cameroon miles behind today is a product of this 11 February 1960. So, 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 are you saying that even the 
end of year handshake of the president or the new year which which of the president that was cancelled was simply because no, of the, political the, reasons the, the because we've had we've had the the cancellation of the president end of year speech we've had uh, the that of 11 february which is coming now and i'm sure we had that of the national day last year uh, national day 20th may that was equally cancelled because of covid 19 but all the political rallies we've not had restriction in terms of number of people face masks and, uh, and so on come on Javis, you are answering the question yourself but i uh, make no mistake to think that this country centers around the president no do you think that without the president handshake the country will not move no no Forget. what what significant what importance is of the president handshake at end of year uh, gifts or whatsoever no i've never even taken time to think of it because it, it is of less significant Cameroonians have very important issues at hand to handle we have a handful of business in hand in our hands then, uh, then uh, the issue of handshake or whatsoever I am coming back to my original position counseling this youth day comforts me on my position once more that this government is not at our service but is at our disservice this government rules by imagination this government does not have the proper measures to rule us again because those who think that coronavirus has been combated in cameroon by the cameroon government are making a very big mistake if you say that the cameroonian population has succeeded in their prayers to solicit God's presence for once and God has answered without delay this is the period God has for the first time in Cameroon answered the entire Cameroonian population without delay because God saw it that if we were to be left into the hands of this senile government we would have been perished we would have been history by today so this government is not they are not even an inch closer to the solution of coronavirus but you and i with the god that we serve we are still healthy we are still talking today whereas in other countries millions of lives have have been taken away so counseling the youth day to me is just part of their comedy because counseling the youth day whereas cbdm rallies hold and Cheers are limited for those who have come, and the words even become cheers for the participants of these rallies. It's a sham, it's a shame, it's a disgrace. Okay, and in national day, like the, the you know, if you ask the officials of this government what really is the significance of the 11th February, most of them will not speak. The few that will struggle to speak will speak with water in their mouth, and that is why. They keep such dates. If they were, there was a way for this government to cut away such dates, so that they should not be coming to remind, to refresh the Cameroonians about what happened in such days, such events, they would have done so. Okay, uh, Professor Mark, you said a while ago that Cameroon is handling COVID-19 effectively as compared to other uh, African countries. Um, perhaps, maybe. It could be due to the fact that we lack the testing ability uh because we go to southwest region how can you say that you are combating a virus effectively where you have little or no testing site effective testing site uh, as far as that is concerned like in southwest region to be more precise in kumba if you have to do covid 19 tests you have to move straight to boya if you have to do COVID-19 tests in Boya, sometimes you cannot even do it at the regional hospital. You have to send it there. You have to send a sample to the CBC uh, Health Service, which is at uh, uh, Motegene. That was where I went to, to do my COVID-19 test. After I shot to the whole of regional hospital in Boya, went to Limbe and come back, and even to the public health in, in Boya, there is uh, an isolation center at the public health in Boya, but there is no testing done at the public health. And you say we are combating COVID-19. 19 maybe most of those cases that people die just because of the fact that we don't know or we have not been tested is because of COVID-19 you know we can't give praises to something that was created for the purpose of uh, actually annihilating people uh, 
Mr. Emmanuel used a word there which I hold strong to it. That the presence of the God of Africa has protected the Africans. The fact that in Cameroon, the claims that we lack testing sites is not enough for us to think that we are not managing the entire thing successfully. I will be sincere to say that Cameroonians as individuals, you know, when I spoke and said we are managing because your question puts is that are we serious? Yes, we are serious. The we there I was included. So I was answering from my own viewpoint that I believe that we are handling it. Because I would not say I am not handling it well. If not, I would not have been sitting here with you. I am handling it very well. And I am not attributing the fact that we do not have much, many more numbers coming daily to uh, the fact that we do not have uh, many testing sites. If there is one testing site, that one testing site is enough to cover a particular group of persons. How, how effective? How can you, they, uh, for a pandemic, that we call it a pandemic, it, and you say a one testing site can be, can, can, can not be a problem in a particular environment. environment. Yes. But we look at the entire Southwest region as a whole. Is it, 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 it but shocking no, you that even say. at a regional delegation of public health, we don't have testing, effective testing done, that you cannot just walk in and say, okay, I want to do a COVID-19 test, and you do that freely. Uh, you must pass through difficulties, and Mr. you say you are Mr. Your... Journalist, this is Cameroon. And the fact that you feel like you went to those places and you did not see them, all those things have been given. They are, in, they are there. There are some people who are sitting on top of these things. We cannot claim that the testing sites are not there. They are there. But there are some individuals who want to make money through it. And that is the issue that I know. There are many of these testing sites all over. But there are individuals who are using it for their money. When you come, they will refuse to do it there and send you somewhere to go and do it. Where they know money will enter their pocket. And so, because the government had declared it is free, doctors will not want to do it free. They want to put money in their pocket. So they make you to feel like these testing sites are not in existence. That is the corrupt nature of most of the people that are working in our various hospitals and working in our government uh, 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 bodies. It is based on the corruptedness of these individuals because there are test kits that have entered Cameroon in their numbers. Testing sites had been established. You can't claim that you go to a whole regional uh, uh, it's, 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 it's and not, you don't see it. It's, it's, it's not a claim. No, I think on, I on, the, on, the, on the 18th, that was on the, on the 16th of December, yes. I went there to do a COVID test. And they sent you something. And the, it was not done there. They said, go to the hospital, cool. went to the hospital, went to Limber from Limber. I finally went to the to, to CBC. So you are, my you, 17, you are not, uh, my, uh, So you are not saying something different from what I just said. The fact that you go there is because you know it should be there. And when you arrive there, they tell you go to this place because they know the benefit of you going to that place for them. They will not do it there because you will do it for free. I'm sure when you went, when you CBC, you paid money. No, I, it was for free. Oh, good. Thank God that the people at CBC did it for free. But in most of these government places, when you enter there... But we had people who said they had paid 35000 somewhere else, but they came to CBC and did it for free. For free. They had paid somewhere else, Good. and it was delaying, so they had to come to CBC that and is they the did issue. it for free. That is the issue. So, is it a problem of we do not have test sites? No. It is a problem of corrupt officials who want to use it to enlarge their pockets. That is where we have a problem. We do not have a problem of sites. The testing sites are everywhere. But there is a problem of corruptedness of officials who have been appointed and assigned to work in those directions. And we are calling on the Minister of Health to look into such a situation and be able to deal with it publicly because individuals are already claiming that there are no sites. 
And you will not blame people for saying that. As long as they go to places and they ask them for money. When we had heard the government declare that this testing is for free. And so, uh, we can limit the, the number of COVID-19 cases to lack of sight. We can only limit it to the fact of corruption. But, and but, but when you say we cannot limit it to lack of testing ability, uh, how, how, what track record do we keep for those who keep dying or who die? Uh, because sometimes, most of, uh, most most often within this this era of pandemic, uh, when people die, they are just buried. When you don't have the ability to test whether they died of COVID nineteen, you still just attribute it to something else with so the pandemic are, like they, this. They attribute it to COVID nineteen. So it means that we have buried a lot of people attributing it to COVID-19 when they do not even have No, it. because if you have a good testing site, you easily do not if these are COVID-19 cases. So that is just to make you also understand that the whole idea of COVID-19 is just like uh, Emmanuel said there earlier, that uh, at times we will not want to see things in order to to influence the, the perspective of some individuals. The truth is that I will make this statement. I know that COVID-19 is real. It is real, but... To an African man, I believe we have what it takes to overcome this issue. You see, when I made mention that the God of the African people is protecting them, we have been a group of people where anytime there is something out there, there is a disease they want to make a drug, Africa is the testing ground. They rush to Africa to test it because they want to kill Africans. Most of our young people, when we were growing up, got paralyzed some of them because of the different vaccines that they were giving them some of them died some got paralyzed some till today are paralyzed because of vaccines and those were vaccines that had not been officially declared good for use but they came to test it in africa so when COVID 19 came though uh, they had not seen whether it's going to affect africans i had the uh, big Gates and his wife declaring how they are going to see millions of Africans dead on the street. So this uh, result you are seeing right now, where we have limited deaths in Africa, is just to show that the hand of God is upon the people of Africa okay. and protecting them from any infectious vaccines and infectious viruses that have been released outside there to consume the lives of people. And I will not want to say... Uh, Mr. Jarvis, that uh, the so the few deaths that we have counted are all COVID-19. No, some people died naturally. All parents died out of cardiac arrest. Some died because of the way they were sick. And when you go to the hospital, when you die, they just say it's COVID. It's not all. So we the number even that we have that uh, Cameroon government officially holds. If you want to check very well, not everybody among them died out of COVID. So the idea of COVID-19 facing cameroon like i made mention of it that as cameroonians irrespective of the fact that you do not see us do the things that everybody is doing out there putting uh, 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 face masks which instead kills you because when you put on face yes. masks it actually stops you from breathing well it makes you to so inhale forget. carbon dioxide which is supposed to be but how can you how can you and how can you attribute that uh, face mask kills instead of i am telling you it you collapses at, your lungs if you look at, let me, uh, let dr explain. fauci dr fauci who is dr uh, fauci who is one of, the one of those of the who are who are a front line runner a front line fighter for covid 19 no, said one of i while they said uh two days no that was a week ago that uh it's but no matter if you could put your two face masks it will be more protective uh, as far as covid 19 is concerned and nobody has actually died yeah, that was one. had scientific record Let, to no, show no. that they died because they were putting on face masks. Let us, I, I, I am not saying that people should not put on face masks, but let me be sincere with this. When you put on the face mask, you are breathing. When you breathe out, what do you breathe? Carbon dioxide. It remains inside the mask. You inhale it back. What do you think you are doing? You might tell me that you are long sift oxygen from the carbon dioxide and take it in but you inhale back the same okay. carbon dioxide who goes which goes inside of you and helps collapses your lungs and so if you do not know that you should know it okay. and the more you take that issue 
the more you die early. So it weakens you, right? you and makes you more. Let me be sincere. It makes you more weak. And if it makes you weak, then you are liable to death. We're coming back to you, Prof. Yes. Cameroon is not just serious. Uh, the reason why they allow Chan is because they know the money that they will get. I don't really understand why you they have been cancelled if thousands of people went to the field. Uh, good afternoon and happy Sunday to you. This one I really say hi, guys. Happy Sunday to you. I think um, from the look of things, it's like Prof has joined the regime. Uh, because you cannot be telling me that a government which has not been uh, first three measures for COVID-19 is managing it well more than Nigeria and other nations. Um, please keep your messages coming on. I start come back to you, Dewum. We are talking about a pandemic. If we look at the word pandemic, it means that it's something which is spread, spread widely and something that is highly contagious. And looking at the fact that um, Cameroon, we lack testing site of COVID-19. Uh, because if you look at, it's, it, I'm using Boya as an example, or Bamenda as an example, if someone has to do a Reverend Father of recent, uh, that was three days ago, was declared uh, that he died of COVID-19. And that Reverend Father was buried yesterday that he died of COVID-19 in Bamenda. And I assume that in the entire Northwest region, the only center for you to do COVID-19 is in Bamenda town. What of the divisions, the, div the different divisions? And come to the southwest region, the similar situation in the southwest region, where if you have to do COVID-19, the regional delegation of public health has isolation center, but similarly, they don't have a testing site, a testing ability, or maybe, uh, I don't know where, uh, why an isolation center is, is, is there, and yet there is nothing or a test center to prove that, okay, well, you have it here, we just shift it to the isolation center. Are we serious in this? Is the government serious in this? No, you know, our government has never been serious in anything. Now, let's be honest about that. You see, come to think of it. We live in a country where in the 21st century, pregnant women could still be operated with a razor blade. I quote to the case of Monique Kumate. Yeah, that was not uh, official now. That was of, uh, something done by the... Listen, I say she's of blessed memory and I say I am saying that if in the twenty first century we are in a country where pregnant women can still be operated with the razor blades, it's terrible. And uh, do you think if we lack common beds to put common patients, will it be COVID? 19 test kits and isolation centers that will be available? I say no. You see, I the last time I was here, I told you that if they well needed good official comedians and they came to Cameroon, they, ne they never needed to write a test. They just needed to find out who is a minister in that country. And then they just start selecting they just start, uh, immediately they give a name that is a minister in that country, you just collect. If they were selling comedians, if they were exporting comedians to another world, and you came to Cameroon, you have a handful of them. Why do I say so? It's not been too long when you saw the minister of sports dismantling accommodating accommodation centers that were constructed to accommodate COVID-19 patients. Now, he never told us how many patients this center had already accommodated before the dismantlement of this site. And since we are in a country where patriotism is defined by life telling, by how many times you call the president's name a day, people came out to defend and know he was right. And it still boils down to what I tell you that the test kit, like you are saying, they might have as well come in. And either there are two things involved either they are carefully kept somewhere for the high class families or 
they have been embezzled as usual. So, when you talk about the proximity between the testing centers and the population, let me tell you that in Cameroon, if you are on the Brits, Cameroon is breeding. They don't care about he who is in Akwaya. They don't care about he who is in Tinto. They don't care about he who is in Boom, Buabua, Fonfuka, Fundo, Njiniko. So they know that if at one point in the night they feel that their breathing is not well and they are closer to the testing center and their families, Cameroon is waxing well. That is how Cameroon has been existing for so long. So it should not be a surprise for you that in the whole of Southwest, you have to leave Mukwalibe in Manfe Road, where the route is impracticable. You have to leave Tinto. You have to leave Ndian, where if it is in the rainy season and you don't have a four-wheel drive, you cannot leave that place and come out to Boya without spending at least four, five days on the route. It should not surprise you why these testing centers are centralized only in the regional headquarters. The governors are there, most of the duos are there, most of the big people are there, but the low man is dying in his suburbs. That is the Cameroon we have been living in. But we are praying that these things should be changing. And we are praying that, I, my prayer, not we, my prayer was that this coronavirus has come to correct many mistakes in Cameroon. If this coronavirus could tear a road leading to all the corrupt government officials of this country, attack them first, so that they feel the pinch of what the poor man feels when he is in difficulty, I am sure that good hospitals, good testing centers will be erected in the next 72 hours. And it goes same. This one is my own personal message I'm sending to these government officials. This present regime, you have to know that by 2025, the route to the prisons of this country will be open to you. So start building good prisons for this country so that when you reach there after 2025, you will not feel the pains that those who are in those countries today are feeling. Because it is not only the hospitals that are bad in this country. Hospitals are bad. Routes are bad. Prisons are bad. Schools are even worse. And if you want to kill a country, start killing the educational sector. Okay. Um, we've just been joined by Song Derek. Uh, Song Derek, thanks for joining us and a happy Sunday to you. Thank you very much, uh, Javis. Thanks to uh, the panelists and uh, a shout out to all the million listeners of uh, House of Common. Uh, we pray that as we deliberate, every day as we sit here taking the pain to talk to the uh, sit tight squirrels of Yaoundé, we pray that uh, there should be a change because we are all agents of change and that change must start from us. So we, we are looking at um, fighting COVID-19 in Cameroon. Markets are still being uh, very much crowded. Uh, churches still uh, go on with their normal uh, traditions. We look at the vehicles, uh, the tra normal transporting vehicles, like those carrying people from one region to another, uh, fully overloaded uh, with little or nothing to done in order to enforce the measures. The government is moving on with Chan, which is ongoing. Uh, we are looking at the aspect whereby the government is telling us that 11 February, which is the day that Cameroon went for a plebiscite, uh, celebrations uh, in terms of the March Pass activities will be uh, have been cancelled. And as as seems as this is not uh, enough, the testing sites in in the different divisions, uh, we lack testing sites in different divisions of uh, the country. Then we are talking about cancellation of 11 February uh, because of COVID-19. Are we serious in combating these diseases, if this particular virus, if we cannot provide testing sites in the remote areas? Thank you very much, Javis. You know, uh, I usually say that Cameroon is a comedy republic and it's governed by comedian. When when we can allow an international competition to hold in Cameroon, 
where we have foreigners in hard hit countries coming into the country and we have football fields jam packed like the Japuma case I saw and then we, we are dealing with international persons who friction with our our, our 22 players in the football pitch who friction with the coaches and, and, and the, the 22 players have to friction with their families back home. We are not afraid of COVID. We could not ban. One thing I will tell you clearly is that Chan could have been cancelled, not necessarily a, a distorted Youth Day celebration, all the same. However, the cancellation of the Youth Day celebration does not in any way uh, impact me on anything because for 55 years, what, has, what have the youth been celebrating? The youth have been celebrating hopelessness. The youth have been celebrating a futureless future. The youth have been celebrating stagnancy. The youth have been celebrating sit tight individuals. So to me, the cancellation does not in any way affect myself as, in, as an individual because those who are a year old when you they started being celebrated are 56 years today and they are waiting for it tomorrow. They are still waiting for it tomorrow that will not come. Right, I want to put it very clear that if the Yaoundé regime, the Yaoundé cabal, thinks that the cancellation of this uh, Youth Day celebration can be pinned on COVID, that's a fat lie. It's a very fat lie that Yaoundé is telling us because we know that the coffers of these countries are running dry. We know that there is a lack of budget to be disbursed. We know that uh, 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 the money that needs to run this thing, it's being used to run something else. And we also know that as it stand, last year, 11 February was a sham in southern Cameroons. And the Cameroon government is not just willing to see another fat blow, another fat failure of the celebration. So they are coming under the guise of COVID-19 to tell us it has been banned. Yes, let it be cancelled rather. It has been cancelled. Let 11 February 2021 be cancelled. But the cancellation of the 11th February will not cancel our numerous problem. The solutions of this problem will bring us back on our feet, Jarvis. Um, when you talk about the aspect that we, the youth are living in a futureless future, we've seen President Paul Bia uh, telling Cameroonians that in 2035, Cameroon will become an emerging nation, and he came up with a team that the great ambition, great opportunities, a great real realization. We've seen how um, in, in, in uh, youth were given uh, uh, integration as far as um, uh, bilingual recruitment of 1,000 bilingual teachers is concerned. We've seen how the keep, government keep launching concours and recruitment of bees. And you're saying that we are living in a futureless future as far as youth in this country is concerned. Thank can, you. How, can you throw more light on that? Thank you very much, Javis, for that, that question. Remember, in 1982, when my father had not met my mother, the President of the Republic told us who were not yet born, who were still moving like spermatozoids, that uh, the youths are the leaders of tomorrow. The youths of those days were 1820. 38 years down the drain, we are still waiting for a tomorrow that will not come. Those who were 20 years old when the president promised them as leaders of tomorrow, when he himself was a youth, they are now 58 years old and still waiting for, for, for a tomorrow. So what, what, what I think, when we talk of emergence, Javis, how rational can the economists of Cameroon talk about emergence when everything we see is a regression, when everything we see is destruction, when everything we see on the streets are guns, and everything we see on the street is a debt and uh, economically downturned economy? What are we going to emerge? Uh, let me let me let me just get to you to say if you want to talk about emergence of a country there are a lot of things you have to consider about emergence we have to consider the human resource we have to consider the natural resource and we have to talk about the industrialization of the economy and most importantly how to boost private individuals to engage in business but Cameroon I will say it and you keep telling me it's a lie that Cameroon has been salarized. It's a salarized economy. It's an economy that depends on salary and we have been fine-tuned to think that only salaries can survive us and you think we are going to emerge. There is no... I'm not a prophet of doom, 
But with the way things are going, with the kind of people who are moving the country, people who cannot move, I don't expect any movement. And the president, he should be above several 80, 80 years above. And he became a worker in the government when he was still very, very young, as young as 28. But today, the Speaker of the House is far more above the, 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 the Senate President. We have old age squirrel sick type persons who have decided to, 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 to uh, um, give out this country, to sit tight on the seat and enjoy the goodies of their countries as long as they live. They say it's wisdom now, it's come with wisdom now. Not, not, not necessarily, we cannot talk about age camp with wisdom. Wisdom should teach us that the youth they claim are the future leaders of tomorrow need to start learning now. Okay. We live in a country where if one region is okay, everybody is okay. Like my brother and the woman Emmanuel Riley said, Anglophone should never dream of any special care because the truth is they don't care if we all die. So we should not even dream of it. They consider us as... <laughs> Please, where you write us, keep your message uh, very simple. Hi, good afternoon. It is with absolute pain to see that uh, we keep deceiving our own people. Why some of our leaders just stay up there, put rules that others used to swell their pockets. Hope someone somewhere just see the cry of the suffering masses it's coming from Agbo in Buya Town. Professor Mark Akumbong, earlier you said um, uh, that as far as COVID is concerned, we are effectively managing it. Uh, we've seen how Cameroon, versus, uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, it is an imp international competition, as um, uh, Song Riley put it, Chan, it's an international competition. We saw DRC Congo where a good number of their players were earlier declared COVID positive. Um, these players are, are, are associated with other players who are associated with supporters who had gone to the market, who had gone to other places. So by that triple effect of this virus, we see that the, the virus spread within a rapid effect. And isn't it logical or isn't it ironical to see that we have more isolator, isolation centers than testing centers uh, as far as COVID-19 is concerned? Uh, because in the entire Southwest region as a whole, you will see more isolation centers than testing centers. What should the government do as far as this COVID-19 is concerned in terms of getting rapid testing and ensuring that testing sites are, made, are put at the disposal of people? Is that Javis? There are questions you journalists wonder people should answer to please you people. But I will be plain to say this to you. I have said and I will still repeat it that when we come when we talk of COVID nineteen, I don't know how real, real it is, but I just believe that it is there because I've heard that it's there. You have done your test. At least you did a test, it proves that there is a testing center somewhere. Which means to me whether it is one testing center or 500 testing centers, the problem is, are we certain of the presence of that disease in this country? Those are some questions we should be asking. I might not want to make Cambodians who feel like it does not exist because I've heard uh, the president come out and say that people should wash their hands, put on their face masks, maintain social distance. The prime minister had given all that. It is... What is ironical about the whole issue is not that uh, we do not have uh, what they call it, we do not have uh, testing centers. What is ironical is the fact that you just presented that there are more. Uh, we have more isolation centers <laughs> than testing centers in Cameroon. Centers. The question is how many people have been isolated in those their isolation centers? You see, it is just... How do you isolate first that you have not done the test? It is just so, a conundrum. When you look at it, it's just a conundrum. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a system with a lot of confusion. And because of the confusion, the confused nature of the government's uh, leadership strategies and styles, you do not expect Camonians like us to come and sit and begin to try to bargain for them and talk for them. I don't care whether they put isolation centers or they put testing centers. 
as long as I'm concerned, I am not going in for testing. I know that some of us who travel, you want to travel, they'll ask you to do the test. It's just normal. But those tests, my brother, I don't want to frighten Cameroonians. I am not one of those people who is going to come and sit on top of the TV and tell Cameroonians, oh, you should... Coronavirus or no coronavirus, virus, we need to face this life. We need to face this life. As Cameroonians, we already know that our leadership has abandoned us at a level. So we must take our life on our own. I will be very pleased to talk for the woman who is in the market selling. She has every right to sell. It is either she sells or she dies of hunger or she dies of lack of money. Why? Because the finances that they are supposed to be pumping to help see that the economy is done is being pumped into a war that is useless. It's being pumped into a stupid war. So you do not expect that as you come here and begin to talk for government isolation centers and testing centers. That mama who is selling the market, I prefer her selling the market. That man who even, has even, that even, even, even at the detriment of her health, there that is we, no detriment. We may, we, she may contact COVID. There is no detriment. As far as, uh, the, the, because the government says that youth, there is maybe, may, may, maybe youth, the celebration may be an avenue for rapid spread. But yet, Question. these same persons who are not going, who are supposed to go for youth, they are in the market already, jump packed in the market, going to church in the market. How do we really combat this virus? That's now? the conundrum I'm talking about. You hear the government says they are stopping 11th February so as to protect the people, when in real sense they are exposing the people. That's just the issue. You tell people open your nightclubs, it's business because they need money for taxes in order to sponsor the war with it, not to help strengthen the economy. They say. Go to the market and sell because you need to pay taxes. So, if they sit at home, would the Cameroon government give the money? No, you and I, we know it will not happen. So, should they go and sell? Yes, let them go and sell. What is the importance of 11 February since... Uh, it's a day of... Maybe they, they will tell you that it's a day of reflection. A day of reflection. Reflecting over what? The history of Cameroon. There's no reflection. They are saying it's a youth day. So they, they, history it of is Cameroon. It's a complete distortion of the history. 11th of February in Cameroon is the day that the plebiscite took place in 1961. 11th February 1961, people went to the pools to decide whether we should join French Cameroon or we should join the uh, uh, Republic Nigeria. of Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that is the day that that decision was made. So I think that's the story that should be told to Cameroonians rather than telling them that uh, it's a youth day. It's not a youth day. It's a youth day over what? So it is not a day that should even be celebrated in that sense of youth day. So if we have to look at those things, I think, uh, think cancelling it is even making it good. <laughs> you see, I, 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 feel, I feel disturbed that we hold our debates on things that do not empower us. That's, that's nonsense. Cancelling that day does not add nor reduce anything in a Cameroonian like me. In, I'm sure that every one of you here sitting here does not even celebrate the 11th of February. What are we celebrating? So, because if you ask me as a youth, I used to go and march as a student. I, I, and you, 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 when you march as a student, you, there was a fanfare. Uh, fanfare, yes. yes. You and buy bread wasted. and sardines, you, you buy that, things and come to the that house. That proves to you that that is rather a day where young Cameroonians, instead of building and keeping their wealth, they waste it. It's a day of waste. So you get it. So instead of letting these youths go and waste what they have been, might be preserving for a long period of time, it is good that they can suit it. Yes, even if they use, they say it was as a result of uh, COVID, thank God that it was cancelled. Thank God. I was even afraid and feeling bad that the Southwesterners and Northwesterners are going to suffer more because of uh, lockdown. Because as long as uh, 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 the celebration was to take place, there was supposed to be lockdown.
and okay. so as long as it has been cancelled there will be no be locked down <laughs> and the people will be free yes, so it just, is good let me just add uh, something yeah briefly one minute for me to to say something like uh, uh prof just said articulated we're talking about celebration of a youth day and that youth day is purely a distortion of the Cameroon history because the Cameroon history has been swallowed up it has been it has been coined to suit the people who want their whims and caprices to be to be satisfied now even if we were to celebrate 11 February I think it's high time we stick 11 February 2021 we bring the balance sheet of a person who was to be married to either a Tangana or or, or, or a maker and the person decided to go with Atangana but unfortunately Atangana got married to his own wealth what is the balance sheet we are presenting from 1961 1962 till date what progress have we made what were the errors what successes have we made and what are the failures how can we better this vote that people decided voluntarily to vote to become one because one thing that the government of Cameroon will not understand is that if a person is given a choice to choose either to be in one side or the other, it means the person had a stand and a choice. Okay. Happy Sunday and good afternoon. COVID-19 is not a pandemic, but a pandemic. A pandemic. <laughs> it is a well-planned project no, and has targeted and as target politicians have joined the movement and now they are using COVID-19 as a walking stick to aid their bad works. COVID-19 is not a virus but just a normal bacteria. It's coming from Zembi from Buya. Uh, this one which says, uh, uh, good afternoon, Tamai, and the panelists keep on with the good work. Special greetings to Prof. Mark and St. Derek. This is Edwin Moyang from Victoria. Um, this uh, read it says uh, good afternoon to you on the studio nice program please tell us uh if you have difficulties in breathing can you still put on your face marks uh, if you have difficulties in breathing yes, no, uh this uh read it says good afternoon to you on the studio um please give your message to you. i'll come to you do you, uh, emmanuel i want us to look at this from a different perspective now when you go to the uh in the uh, different um, hospitals around the, 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 the divisions in cameroon you see that it's difficult for you to have a test of covid 19. and if we are canceling you the if the government is canceling you this celebration because they feel like you they celebrate the celebration itself may be a catalyst to spreading this virus which is a pandemic and so they've decided that they shut it down but they I, the same people who were to go for you they are still in the markets today the same people are seeing the quarters going to school, mixing left and right, and we've seen the law enforcement of measures in schools being taking place. Uh, the government is not taking in effective measures in to, in order to ensure that to see that uh, the measures that we put in place are respected. Can we equally say that the government has failed in this regard? No, you, you see, I'm one of the people who have been struggling to make young Cameroonians of my generation to know that our government is a failing government. It is an ever failing government. Each decision they take, they take it one second and the next second it backfires. I, I'm sure that when I was starting this program, I met you to understand that those who are uh, leading us, ruling us, uh, those of this present regime are uh, inadvertent forgetters and we are inadvertent and willful forgetters of history that has made most Cameroonians basking in their ignorance. Why? Because their decisions only come from the top and only the, those at the bottom suffer the effects. Now, Youth Day was coming up. We have councils. And the mayors are very close to the population. Have you heard of any formal meeting that took place between these people who are the auxiliary, between the main administration and the bottom people and the low class people? No. Of which information flow was to be like a preparatory ground for the people to actually understand what the cancellation. 
because until you send me this topic yesterday i think it's only in boya on wednesday that I was made to understand at the governor's office that there was not going to be any alarm february i who is a social who is a social actor meaning that the person who is at Ngulmakon, the person who is at kolofata who does not watch the television because there's no electricity there hopefully as i'm saying until that day we we'll only have in memory that 11 february is coming up and they'll be preparing some will be even in the suburbs plucking their mangoes and the, their oranges to sell that day but how do you explain the fact that listen, Chan, listen, which I'm is an coming. international event is ongoing with uh, people from different countries are sung there rightly puts it uh from hiding seat areas are participating in Chan, we had DRC players where uh, 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 before the, the match between Cameroon, to, uh, all of the squad was declared Aye. positive. Uh, they went to a different hospital, just a handful now were declared positive, who may have associated with others, and now it's difficult to have these tests conducted rapidly in other areas. You know, Cameroon takes first when it comes to force, when it comes to lies, when it comes to fakeness, Cameroon takes first. And I'm sure that even in heaven, it shall surely take first. How do you explain the fact that in the morning people are tested 13 positive, and by noon, only two are positive? Are you sure that even these two were positive? I see that. Because the way we have been managed for 39 years plus has made it in such a way that even a nursing school child, if you tell the child that this is green, that child makes two steps behind comes back, watches again before believes you, the father, you the father. And it is because the system has already poisoned the minds of those who are still fetuses in their mother's wombs. So, Chan, which I did not even want to talk about because I don't see the importance of Chan. Chan, what would be the importance, the effect of Chan on you and I, common people? The chan will only go to those people, the, the pockets of those people in Yaoundé. And I take this opportunity to say I shout to those who bought tickets until today. They have never been able to enter the stadium because of one, either the roads are bad, either the first law enforcement officers <coughs> have blocked the road. Because practically, Karifo Ajib is not passing any day of the match, whereas it is leading to the, to the, to, to, to the, to the stadium. But coming back to your question, you see, I told you the cancellation of 11 February is purely political. It has no bearing with the existence of the coronavirus. Big, and I still explain so that you understand for the second time. This is the day that gave birth to all the historical problems of Cameroon that we are living today. And these people are looking for every way. If there was a way for them to turn back the hands of time, they will wipe out this day. And if there was a way for them to turn back the hands of time so that history should be rewritten, perhaps, maybe only in one language, so that only certain people should understand it better, it would have been done. Okay. You know, 11 February has caused a damage and fresh wounds in our hearts. Because each time I think of it, is that I should be cursing the soul of Foncha, whom, in his humble opinion at that time, he thought he was going into a gentleman's okay. agreement. Okay. But see where it landed us. So, Summer, it, has no bearing, it has no bearing with the existence of coronavirus because, like I said, snacks are 24 on 24. And those who enjoy these <coughs> snacks, the better are those in the government. And they buy the champagnes at 12 okay. o'clock in midday. Good afternoon, Mr. Coordinator. Please, I love what Prof is saying. The government does not have a plan of tackling COVID-19. Every Cameroonian should depend on God to tackle COVID-19. Um, this uh, we say good afternoon to you all. Nice program. I think we should talk more of COVID this time around as far as that is concerned. Uh, Professor Mark Akumbong. Before uh, getting to uh, others, I think I want to get your own view as far as this is concerned. Um, this, this time around, we are looking at 
Cameroon government in itself and the medical equipment. You talked about the fact that maybe uh, this this testing site were made available, but some people have decided to sit on them, um, referring others to hospitals. So now, what should the government do as far as the congesting or decentralizing the COVID-19 test centers is concerned? Because as you speak right now, uh, there are more isolation centers than testing centers. I see there's that issue. Uh, is it not a conundrum that you have more of these? Um, so what should the government do now as far as that is concerned? Is it not time to prop those who are responsible. We saw that when the lockdown was instituted late March, uh, bags of rice were donated, yes. and those bags of rice ended up in the fiasco. I remember. Uh, we've had a series of donation, financial donations that were done, as far as so that people could have relief materials from COVID. But till date, we are still waiting for this. It's like waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ to receive those materials. It's like on this platform, I asked a question that where did that rice go? <coughs> Because th those loads of rice and uh, other things that were sent were sent for the suffering Cameroonian people was not sent for the government. So at times you do ask these questions. Are we supposed to forge on with embezzlement to this state where every little thing goes into some particular people's keeping? Who are we deceiving? I will say this to the Cameroonian leadership. You might deceive a people some of the time, but you will never deceive the people all of the time. And be rest assured that when you keep feeling as like, like you are deceiving a people, there comes a time when the people will rise up. And when they rise up, there will be nothing that will be able to stop them. Cameroonians are patient. Cameroonians are humble. But those who sit at the helm of this nation, leading this nation, they are misleading it. I am speaking because, you know, I made mention, I said I didn't even want to talk about the whole idea of testing sites and uh, the idea of uh, uh, whether it's holding sites and quarantine sites. I don't want to talk about them. But I'll mention this. It is in the responsibility of the Minister of Health to make sure that his what which he gave the people be executed. You shouldn't tell the people that in this particular period of time, testing is free. And then people do not have the testing sites everywhere. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want to say this. I expected that the same way they are going around and doing this door-to-door uh, -door, uh, vaccination of stuff, they should do the testing that same way. It was supposed to be a door-to-door -door stuff. And I remember, I think it's Senegal. Senegal had to go fast in creating uh, test kits, their own test kits, within that March period, March, April. The Senegal created, they were not expecting that they should be sending it from abroad. And they created theirs and tested their people with it. That is the way we fight it, this kind of issue. And if you ask the question to the Cameroon government, are you sure there are people who have not come up with such ideas? Those ideas must have come up, but and the trash they silence them. Uh, also coming to this uh, point, at times, we could blame this government <coughs> like we seem to do every moment and even now. The question is, what if withholding those test kits is for the protection of Cameroonians? Because I saw a situation in Tanzania where President Mokafuli actually ordered that uh, tests should be done even on Popo. Uh, uh, Jews should be done on engine uh, specimen and others. So he took things, gold, blood and others and gave as samples. And when they tested all those things, they came out positive. So the test kits that came from abroad, were they really meant for our good or they were meant to psychologically destroy us? 
what Senegal did in creating their own test tubes, which they used in testing the people, in the, and was a five-minute issue. Five-minute results are out. Is that not the path we should have taken? Because that, to me, will be a sure means to know that this person is affected or not. I'm practically hearing little or no uh, increase of cases in Senegal. There are many other African nations that seems as if nothing is existing in it. Are you sure that the people are too super? <coughs> so, I will not want to keep talking on that. The whole idea, not only the government of Cameroon is operating in a serious quagmire, but I want to say even the idea of COVID-19 <laughs> is a serious problem. It's a problem that we need to solve. There is a lot of confusion attached to that particular uh, disease. So, uh, if I have to speak to the government, I want to say that it is necessary that when words are made, when the president sends out words, when the minister says something, you shouldn't say them and sit in Yaoundé and expect that things will be done. Get to every hospital, find out if there are test centers. Go to everywhere and find out if they you should inspect the test centers and find out if people are being tested there or not. Because okay. if that is not done, we should not claim that, no, they have been established. Because I already made mention that it had been established and some people are actually, in one way or the other, using it for their money-making uh, 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 machine. Okay. Those are some of the cases. But I think that it should be in the place of the minister to walk from town to town, village to village, quarter to quarter, finding out if in case those test uh, centers have been created so that we should not be assuming that things, this thing is not in among our people when it is there. That should be done. Okay. But like I would say to conclude uh, on this case, <coughs> I believe that the God of Africa is protecting Africans from any form of of COVID-19. So I am calling on Cameroonians to be at the watch. They should be the watch uh, uh, tower of their own lives. Watch your life. Okay. Do not wait for the government. Thank you, Professor Mark. Do not wait um, for the government. Song Derek, we have COVID-19, which is real. Scientific evidence uh, have shown that COVID-19 is real. Cameroon government bars <coughs> are open. Nightclubs are full to its capacities. Uh, yet, um, they are telling us that um, the issue of 11 February is because of COVID-19. As far as this is concerned, what should be the take-home message for those who still are in this quagmire of understanding the reality of COVID-19 and the cancellation of some major events, while other major events, uh, like we saw the CBDM rally, were cancelled uh, during the... Um, uh, regional. Uh, regional council election campaign was launched. Thousands of people, almost thousands of people, gathered at their council, and the whole place was full to capacity. Uh, but yet, other events are cancelled. What should be the take home for those who probably are still confused within this system? Well, uh, I used to put it very clear that COVID has been invented to us by China, and China is free from it. It has been exported to other countries. Uh, I don't know how true COVID is, but I know anything that has a name exists. So if COVID has been given a name, then it exists somehow in some form. Remember, Cameroon is that kind of country that uh, everything is done depending on who you support. You know, when Professor Maurice Camto called for a march in order to regularize the the system, the electoral system, in order to call for the end of the war, the senseless war ravaging the southern Cameroonians, it was not authorized. When people call for a rally end, the government understands that this rally can pull above 500 persons or so. The government can never accept that. But when it is a CPDM thing, then the rally can hold. And that is, that, is, that is a fallacy that most of the people working for the government, 
they don't understand. A minister for the government does not understand that as by virtue of the fact that you are a minister, you are a minister for Cameroonia, not for a political party. But during campaigns, they leave their offices to go and campaign for a particular individual. And with this COVID issue, where at first, uh, last year, number of children who were to participate in the match pass, they were reduced to 60. This year, under the guise of COVID-19, they were reduced to 50. And in the wake of a morning, it is canceled. But the sad story is that the friction that exists between these children is not as worse as the friction that occurs in the market. In the market, if you don't want to hit somebody, somebody will hit you. And the COVID-19 measure tells us that at least a meter apart, if we enter our market in Cameroon, in fact, we are 0, 0 0.00 uh, uh, millimeters apart. We are working on friction. If you go to the nightclubs, to the snacks on Saturdays, on Fridays, you will see them jam-packed. And then you see a lot of friction. And the way COVID, the myth of COVID has been presented to us, it, make, it is very clear that it spread faster. Because if you have to cover your mouth before sneezing, you have to, and it means just from a matter of spittal exchange, some other person will contact. So the rate of spread is very fast. But we asked ourselves, because like I said at the beginning, the cancellation of the Youth Day celebration is not a problem. But the base, the foundation of the cancellation is what is our problem. Because you can't cancel Youth Day celebration under COVID-19 and our markets are active, our churches are active, our buses at the beginning, remember the government said a 70 sister bus now could take perhaps 35 persons or 30 because each seat needed to be, a, a, to, 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 to be spaced. But like seriously, even those who were overloaded, when they did that, the government did not in any way protect the common man because transport had to double. They did not protect and money did not add into our pocket. Mind you that if people need to respect measures, because I'm not one of the person who refuse that people should deny the measures put in place. And all thanks to the head of state who openly tells us to put on masks and is always with his own mask, as I usually see him on, on TV. But we ask ourselves, what are the measures that are put in place? For instance, Javis, I am a buy and seller. I buy and sell. And if I don't sell, I don't eat. Summarily, for my protection, there is COVID. I am renting in a house, and the landlord will not understand the COVID pandemic because that's his own source of income. I'm not, I will not be in the market, and no measures are taken. Like the measures that were taken in Uganda, where the president could openly tell you, beat this person if you see the person in public, because the president had to send food right to their houses. If that is done, but we live in a country where the people who uh, uh, propagate the COVID spread and the level of the COVID spread are people who want to enrich their private pockets. That is why even when relief materials are sent, people tell you that everything in Cameroon is under control and their relief materials are still sent. And the people take them and we never see them. The COVID is enriching some people. In fact, it is very clear that anything that happens negative in Cameroon is positive to others because they enrich themselves. So I, I conclude by saying that the Cameroon government is, 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 is built up by people who have gone old. They are aged. We do not deny the fact that they have wisdom. But we, we, we cry, we decry the fact that they have refused to implement the wisdom because they are happy that the few rich autocrats should be enjoying while the majority impoverished masses of the country 
should always be at the beck and call. That is why the politics of Cameroon is a kind of politics where the politicians create to the common man a need and allow him for to forever remain a beggar. Before we take leave of you, give me a last word briefly. Yes, uh, I wanted to to say that it will appear when it is a CPDM rally, coronavirus disappears immediately from that arena. But when it is a youth day celebration where the history of Cameroon has to be commemorated and the youths and the youths sit to ponder on how far we have come with the, with the, compl with the complexity of our being together since 1961, that is when coronavirus comes in. Like I said, I will end the way I started. I started by saying that... I said briefly, now. Yeah, I, I, we are out of time. No, we are not out of, we are time. out of time. I started by saying that <laughs> if... No, I, we are not out of time. I started by saying <laughs> I that... I said we are out of time. Look at the time. We are I, out of time briefly. Yeah, I started by saying that hey, I yes. personally do not really believe so much in COVID because if coronavirus existed the way it existed elsewhere, all of us would have been all gone. But thanks to the gods of Africa and the divine God, whom for the first time promptly answered the prayers of Cameroonians and came to our rescue. So the government has done nothing to ever rescue one soul in Cameroon as far as coronavirus is concerned. Everybody should hold tight to African herbs, if at all you know any, and forget about the government. Thank as you very far much. as coronavirus is concerned. Professor Mark, your last word before we go? Yes, I am calling on Cameroonians of uh, every corner of this nation to make sure we go back to our roots. We will stay more protected than when we expect that Europe should assist and help us. As, I, as Javis rightly said earlier, I believe in African solutions for African problems. And I believe we can do it. Why? Because even though they had brainwashed most of us and deceived us that we were living in caves and living in the jungle and then a white man only came to come and save us, that is a big lie. We as a people are the same people who give civilization to the world. And that is why till tomorrow our brain capacity is more powerful than that of even the the people you call white people. And the only reason why most of us, we are beggars and not innovative is because of the brainwashed nature of our mind. So it is time for <laughs> us to come back leaders. to ourselves. And when we start digging deep to know who we are, that Both becomes time. the difference. So we can make a great difference when we start depending on who we are and what we can do for one another than when we wait for Europe to come and help us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Briefly, last of all, Thank you very much, Javis, uh, to the Cameroon government and to the listeners at large. I think that the cancellation of the Youth Day celebration for 2021 is a mixed blessing. And when I say it's a mixed blessing, I want us to look at the blessing side. As the Cameroon government has cancelled this Youth Day, which is distorted history, it is necessary that we look for a different day for the youth to be celebrated, and then we look for a reason to celebrate this day 11th of february in the true history of cameroon where we should take every 11th february if at all it would be possible because the future is pregnant we should take every 11th february each year to draw and take stocks of the progress that the two cameroon that came together they are making okay thank you Thanks to thank you, Song Derek. Thanks to all those who took our time to watch this edition of our program. You can go to our website www.btmediagroup.net to get our details, or you get to us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is my at my media prime at my media prime is our Twitter handle. You go to our YouTube channel where you can watch all of our programs and get all exclusive documentaries to our YouTube channel, which is BT Media Group. Our YouTube channel is BT Media Group. You go to the YouTube channel, you can get us on Facebook. To those of you who are not familiar with our Facebook, it is my media prime on Facebook. My media prime on Facebook, you can get to us or Instagram is my media prime. Instagram is my media prime. We also have a LinkedIn page which is 
my media prime and to those of you who have been asking for the direction as far as the website for the national security is concerned in terms of getting your id card you can go to the director general just type the national come on national security uh national security you get to that website there will be a link that will be given to you then you can access the link and see where you can input your data for your id card verification or to track your id card as far as that is concerned i'll leave you with this no matter the matter what matter is your matter no matter the matter what matter is your matter and what should matter for you this day is that covid 19 is real covid 19 kills take your measures effectively and be safe wherever you are my name is tamai javis from cameron's economic capital duala hope to see you next sunday or yet another edition of the program stay blessed and god bless cameroon